All right, welcome back everybody. This is a GTM. In this little video tutorial, I want to basically demonstrate uh, the uses of uh, gradient layers and you know layer styles. I mean, there's plenty of ways we can use this, but I wanted to show you two particular ways that could be really effective in your designs. I'm going to go ahead and launch up uh, 3D Max here. And for example, I'm just going to go ahead and open up... Uh, I have an image of a female headshot here and she's got some headphones on it's a pretty high res image to work with I'm gonna go ahead and uh, double click that and we'll just call this uh, headshots alright and let me um, expand that out a bit and I'm gonna just take my magnifying glass hit alt to minimize it now there's a couple ways we can do gradient layers and layer styles one way of doing it is um, we can cr create a new layer and I can go to my gradient tool and depending let me uh, size this down just a bit and depending on the colors we pick so for example I can click here and this will bring me up to my gradient editor and you can create new gradients so for example if I start off with this one just the standard black and white gradient and I can click here double click in maybe I want uh, we'll say like a pink let's go with a light pink alright and then obviously I have white here or I can maybe use something interesting we can go let's let's stick with white for now and then I can press OK and then there goes my new gradient so I can take that overlay it on top or you know I got different styles this is a radial gradient I'm using or I can, you know, click here and, you know, and that can just be a regular linear gradient. And then from there I can actually go to my blend modes and, you know, get different types of effects. That could really make it interesting looks. So your gradient uh, layers with your blend modes can be very powerful. You know, there you go, that looks pretty neat. And at the same time, you know, you can play with your opacities if you don't want it too, you know, prominent or so forth. Like I said, you can actually make interesting gradient patterns. For example, here's some presets. Uh, I'm going to use this one right here. And, of course, I can actually, you know, reposition these and even make the gradients bigger in certain areas by expanding them or even adding. If you want to add gradients, you can just click. If you want to delete them, just click, drag them right off. Click, hold down, drag them off. And that's how you take care of that. So I'm going to press OK. And I'm going to actually uh, click on a new gradient, except for I didn't want pink. And I didn't want it on that layer. <laughs> I want to put it on this layer. There we go. Something like that. And then I can go to my blend modes. And let's see what we get. Ah, oh, look at that. That's pretty interesting. You can shuffle through. Let's go back to the top and just kind of shuffle through these. That's a nice style. That's pretty cool. So like I said, play with your gradient layers. Now that's one way is just overlaying the gradient above the image. Now another way is, um, let me go ahead and delete that layer. And you actually double click inside to get to your layer styles. And then we can go to gradient overlay as well. And here it is. It creates a gradient overlay and then of course we can click here and then find our colors of course if I want to uh, manipulate them change the colors around add new ones or whatnot I'm gonna delete that off and once I press OK now I have kind of control of how I want this to overlay so I can change the angle around at the same time I can switch from radial or you know angle reflective which is really neat of course you got your opacities right here but then you also have the blend modes so you have a little more control this way so I can actually take the same effect like I was doing it earlier but within the image so that's really neat now this effect your layer styles can really can really enhance your designs so for example this is pretty good I'm gonna press OK and there we go we have that layer style 
cool thing is, of course, I can come back, and if I need to use that layer style over and over on other images, you can just see I have the layer style gradient over. I'm going to save that, call it new style, and then I can name it, say, orange, orange um, gradient, gradient, gradient overlay, or whatever. And then I can press OK. Press OK. So if I open up another image, let's say, let's use, um, here, I'll go ahead and use this uh, Edward Ulrich I had right here. And with that new style, you can see it's in our styles right here. And I believe it's called, uh, hold on, where is it? Let me go to my windows. We got, let me close that out and reopen it. Styles. And the new gradient overlay should be, where is it? I believe I saved it. Uh, let me double check. Oh, let me go here. I believe I saved it. Hold on. Let's click here. Let's save the new style. And let's call it include layer blending options. I forgot that. And let's go, we'll just call it layer new style. Press OK. And I believe this is our new one right here. So I can open that up and just drag that right onto there. Oops, let me unlock that layer. And I should be able to drag that right on there. And there goes that effect. Alright, we're going to go ahead and continue uh, using gradient overlays or layers and layer styles. As you can see, I dropped one that we created created that we save from our layer styles and like I said you can reuse them over and over. Uh, be careful when you do you know use these on certain images like for example this Edward Elric wasn't the highest for his image so it can be quite destructive to it. So you might actually have to come back in here and maybe um, at least with this image alone and probably go to your gradient overlay maybe bring the opacity down or let alone just um, go on Edward's image alone and maybe just uh, give me a slight filter let's go surface blur just to hide those pixels and that could help you know fix your image up a little bit anyways but let's go ahead and use our layer blends with our custom brushes and you know basically our layer blends and layer styles so I'm gonna go ahead and close this out now this is really neat here, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and start a new file here, and you know for now we'll just eight and a half by eleven is fine. And just so you can see the effect take place, I'm gonna double click here, and I'm gonna click my swatch and change this to black, and I'm gonna fill that background black, and I'm gonna add a layer, and I'm gonna go ahead and just call this uh, background, and I'm gonna go ahead and lock it. Use your padlock to lock that layer. All right. Uh, now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take my brush here and find some custom brushes. For example, this one I was using earlier, I believe, right here. And let me uh, click on the layer above. All right. Let's find a color. I usually use white. And you know what? I don't like that one. Let's go ahead and, um, for example, I'm going to take a, a random, let's see, we got some smoke brushes here. This is neat. All right. And then from there, I'm going to, you know, I can bracket out. And um, notice I'm, I have white. I'm laying down my brushes in white. And the reason I'm doing that is, um, let me resize that, is uh, when you lay down white to grayish tone brushes, uh, you can actually just click on your layer styles and change the colors on the fly. So I'm going to go ahead and um, just click something like that, you know. And let's see, um, let's find another one here. Maybe something like that. And I'm just going to randomly throw that up there. All right, so with that alone on its own layer, and I'll go ahead and call this smoke, I guess. From there, 
double click, take advantage of your gradient overlays. Just that alone gives it a nice little effect with the regular black and white. So I'm going to go ahead and, of course, you can click here and it reverses it. Just let you know. All right, but I'm going to click and change these into some interesting color patterns. So maybe I want to, you know, maybe I want a rainbow effect. And there you go. Look how interesting that pattern looks now. And I'm going to go ahead and press OK. Uh, of course, I can, you know, adjust the angles of it, which looks really, really neat. And well, at least I, I think it does. And then from there, I can press OK, and then now I can, um, you know, add some more effects to it. Maybe I want a slight glow. You know, I'll go ahead and put a little outer glow on it. Maybe not white, but something similar to one of the colors here. Maybe I'll go kind of like a pinkish. And let's see if that works out. I'll put it on normal. I'm going to spread it out a little bit, but get the size out. Soften it down. There you go. And of course, we can change the different types of glows. You know, um, let me click here. Or we can even use like gradient type of glows, you know. Not that I would do that. That looks pretty destructive. But you get the idea here. You know, maybe I wanted to go with uh, something more of a bluish glow. So that's how you get those weird glow effects. So let me take it a step back here and um, show you where it makes a little more sense. I'm going to cancel that out. I'm going to hide this layer. I'm going to create a new one. And let's pick a new brush here. And let's say... I'm gonna use this. Here's one brush. I'm just gonna click that right there. And you know what? Maybe let me grab a, a random other style here and I'll just throw that right there. Something simple like that. Let me move that over. Alright, now I can double click in my layer styles. Of course I can just do a color overlay for whatever color I want. Um, you know, maybe I wanted it to be slightly, I can click it, maybe I want it to be kind of a greenish glow, or greenish color. And then from them to give it that little glow, to pop it out just a little more, you know, I'll come in, click on the outer glow, but I'll match the color somewhat similar, maybe like a lighter green. And then I'll play with my uh, size and the spread. And then, of course, you could mess with the, you know, the overlays. Let me make that size just a little bit bigger. Oops, let me go back to normal. Maybe that brush didn't work as well. Uh, let's try another one. Let's uh, hide him. And let's get something a little more... Well, the brush is not too overpowering. Let's try. Let's try this. All right, so I'm gonna click that. Whoops. There we go. And I'm gonna double click this, and let's give it a color overlay. Maybe something like red, or let's go with like a like a bluish like that. And then I can come in, click on my outer glow. And I'm going to match the color somewhat, so it's somewhat a similar blue. And then I can, you know, put it to normal. Get the size. Spread a little bit. But let's keep the, the spread kind of tight and the size a little bit bigger. And there you go. Now you got these little glow effects. Now the neat thing is, once those layer stars are put on that layer, whatever brush you lay down will have that effect on it. See, pretty neat. And let's try, uh, let's try this one. Pretty cool. Let's try this. There you go. Now you got that weird glowing effect. Now I hope that helped. Uh, you know, like I said, use those to your advantage. Play with your layer styles. You can do some really cool effects with these. And if you like the effects, save the new style.
and then you know name it whatever I can call this baby blue glow or whatever and like I said you can use that on your text your fonts here watch I'll lay down the font now put it on a new layer I'm gonna call this glow let me turn that out a bit and I'll just drop that new glow right on there there you go uh, that didn't work too well on that one but you know how about if I duplicated it All right and then put the glow on the second one and then reveal the first one there we go all right hope this helps uh, play around with those and uh, you know discover some new exciting uh, tricks thanks for watching